Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Proudly brought to you by Just Car Insurance. Now, a couple of months ago, I challenged Marty on the Mighty Car Mods forum for a battle, his car versus my car. And the deal was whoever lost had to get rid of their car. And that was very simple and in an undisclosed location with the cameras turned off, we battled it out, just the two of us, and I'm very happy and proud to reveal for the first time that Nissan was victorious. Well, it was a little bit sad at you first. You were very sad, Martin, weren't you? I was a little bit upset about having to get rid of my Martin car. Martin was so upset. He was, dude, don't mess with my unicorn. Where'd you get that? Dude, don't mess with Flurpy. Flurpy. Well, it was a little bit sad. It was actually a blessing in disguise. Sorry, um, yes, it was a blessing in disguise because Marty's car sucked anyway. So it was actually, can you, does that smell like ass? So we're going to need to do another take. Oh, it actually so smells like ass. That's gross, man. This is my car. It's a good car. It has gears, boost, seats, a heater, and even a wide band. But lately, it also has water on the inside. Oh, man. I figured out a solution, but it didn't go down too well with passengers. When it rained, I might as well have been on a motorbike. It isn't all that pretty. My meticulously resprayed bumper's got a typical city car hammering. The headlining never got replaced, some dirt never got removed, the seats had drumsticks under them, and it never fully recovered from the neglect its former owners treated it to. So I thought long and hard. 50,000 Ks, never missed a beat. Lots of mods, lots of work, learning new skills. But all things, well, good things have to come to an end. Sometimes they're just not worth fixing. My Rego runs out in a day, so that's it for this car. It's its very last outing ever. It's going good. Be a little bit sad to see her go. But on to bigger and better things. Now, there's a lot of contention between Nissan and Subaru, but if there's one thing it's certain, it's that Marty's car always sucks triple unicorn balls. It was not that bad. Three balls, that's 50% more than it was, two. It was fine, I bought it in the dark. Yeah, you did buy it in the dark, but it was rusty. It had wet undies in it, and not just the ones you wore when I ripped you a new one. Uh, and it, it stunk, didn't it? It never broke down once. It didn't once. break down once, but it did suck. It wasn't that fast. It wasn't that fast, kind of proved it. Uh, well, but were all Subarus that slow when you buy them, or is it just yours? Like, is that indicative of most Subarus that aren't modified? Are they that slow? Because I think we need to let, let the gang know. Or all Sylvia's crashed because someone's put them sideways. <laughs> oh, oh, has every WRX been used in a Ram raid? <laughs> Smash a gearbox Has every Sylvia else? had 20 inch chromies on it before you bought it and put proper wheels on it? I know Flurps, what do you think? Flurps reckons you're a dickhead. Flurps can eat one. Later that week, on the back of yet another tow truck, my new car arrived. It made its way to the driveway powered by the very same force that other Mighty Mods cars had arrived. Gravity. This 1992 grey wagon cost less than half what the white one did, mostly because it's got terminal engine damage, and driving it for more than a few minutes would see coolant temperatures rise off the scale. What it doesn't have, however, is rust or any significant panel damage. It's also got a sunroof, which is really rare for these cars. Otherwise, it's as stock as the day it left the Subaru dealer in Melbourne 19 years ago. goes. Amazing. Now it's always a good idea to wash your car first to remove any and all human slime. So when your car's got a great drive line but the body's beyond saving, what can you do? You go out and you get yourself a new shell. 
the old white wagon is going to donate some very useful parts to the new one and that's going to be a massive job. So that's the last drive ever of the white Subaru RS. It's time to strip it. The interior of the white car was first on the list. The door trims are removed and the clips and screws bagged up and labelled, something we'd be doing a lot of over the coming weeks. Now while I was doing this, Moog was overseas signing a record deal in Germany. I hope he doesn't come back with another Golf. The seats in the white car were quite a bit cleaner than the new ones, so they'll be swapped in too. The boot floor, carpet, trims, seat belts, speakers, everything is stripped out. So everything's gone except the dash. Next step, we strip the outside. The body kit that comes factory on these cars is quite rare, so it's worth holding on to. The window rubbers are kept as spares also. It's got a wall bro in it, an aftermarket fuel pump. That's awesome. After removing all the engine ancillaries, the engine and the gearbox could be extracted from the white car in one go. So there it is, the engine is out. It's on the floor of the garage. The next step is to get it into the other car. But first I have to take that engine out too. Next the busted up engine had to be removed out of the new car. Luckily I had a help in the form of the mechanical Stig and his assistant Nath. Yay for not having standard exhaust. There, is, there isn't even a coloured replacement part to be seen. There's nothing man, it is stock. It's got a, it's got a uh, aftermarket dump pipe top section, really? that's interesting. It smells exactly like my old wagon Dude. before it got redone. And the thing. It smells like one of the old people. I haven't changed the clothing. Pretty neat, eh? Hmm. You've done well, very well. Probably failed. Head of tank leaking. This is well. Is that high enough? Yeah, yeah, plenty high enough. Is that too high? Yeah. Probably a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, but just don't let it down. Just put the jack stands at the yeah, middle load. Yeah. The height and then just... Oh, you mean the jack stands are under that one? Ah. Uh. Between them, they have extracted more than 50 Subaru engines, and they set about reviewing my purchase. It's supposed to be green, not dirty brown. A helping hand is worth, well, a lot, and we managed to strip and extract this engine in less than half the time it took me to get the white one out by myself. This time we had to be extra careful not to damage the body of the new car. Can you put it back on please? Looper! <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, that cracked it. Once it was out, we could start preparing the good engine to be refitted. Because we're taking the engine out, it's the best time to change a clutch. We're using the Exidi Sports Tough. And it's got some little Haffy and Sally clutches on the back, which is pretty cool. This clutch comes as a full kit with friction material and a pressure plate. It's much easier to do this now when the engine's out of the car than later on. We set about upgrading the engine mounts on the good engine. We replaced the rear main seal as well as gapping and installing new spark plugs, which is an absolute breeze to do compared to when the engine is in the car. A clutch aligning tool positions the clutch plate in the right spot before the cover is reattached. The gearbox clutch fork pin is reinserted and the gearbox and engine bay given a good clean. 
My helpers made a quick exit when it was time to extract steering racks, and I don't blame them. Piece of crap. That is the most least fun thing to do on cars, full stop. I got in my hands on a 99 WRX steering rack and pump, which is a good upgrade over the factory item, so it went in along with the STI shocks from the old car. Sometimes the best way to get stuck into your engine is to get in your engine bay. So now I've got a new steering rack and the front suspension swap. Tomorrow, the rear. I only had a few hours to save any parts that were left on the white wagon before it went to the big wrecking yard in the sky. Or ground. Marty's enlisted the support of a whole bunch of Subaru nerds who are going to help him get his car back to a drivable state. Oops, I lost the belt. Subaru drivers are just so fun, aren't they? Lost my top radiator hose, which looks exactly like that. I bought a new one. It doesn't have scungy brown stuff in it. I don't know if you can see that. Do you know what that is, Martin? Uh, probably my head gasket. No, no, it's human slime. Which is kind of like human slime. But from an engine. <laughs> This is, this is the throw out fire. It's going to be in a plastic bag, Marty. It was, but I took it out. <laughs> yeah, that was very dumb. I know. So, Reggie, you've done this a few times, yeah? Oh, about 400. And what makes this kind of car superior to a, a Nissan, you reckon? Just the design, the poise. Uh, I don't know. It's horses for courses. Um, I don't mind an SR. I just don't like the way they sound. Because they sound kind of tough, whereas these sound like a donkey with something up the right? Like these kind of have this, and like, you know a donkey trying to go, they're just, like that kind of thing. SR sounds like a trying to through a didgeridoo, so I just don't really like the sound of that. Two good ones. on the pink cooler. I've... Somehow lost a um, little basket thingy and uh, can't seem to find it. The filter has come off inside the fuel tank. Is that because of the um? Is it because of the red ball can? That it's because of the racing fuel there? pump installation. So we're going swimming. And it's covered in petrol. It doesn't sting at all. <laughs> While Marty said about losing more parts, the Subaru nerds figured out exactly how to start the new engine. That's return. Oh, okay, well, that's okay. in. Okay, well, that one's got to go there then. Yeah. Right. We're finished. The engine is in. Everything's connected. We're going to turn the key and hopefully it doesn't explode. Oh, where did that go? Oh. Shit, man. If it even starts. It Nah, battery. Battery. Jump leads. Alright. Yeah. You alright? Get the camera off. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Is it in gear? Nah.
With the engine running, the exhaust, brakes, wheels, sway bars, lights, fuel pump, radiator fans and basically everything can be bolted back on. Finished, done. Car hopefully works. It's out there in the dark. As usual, it ended up being dark by the time we finished. But uh, many hands make light work, to quote a good friend who is here. And uh, yeah, time for a test run. It works. After rewiring the boost gauge wideband in stereo, it was time to try and squeeze a little more go out of this new car. From the factory, these cars come with a water to air intercooler setup, which is good, but this is better. This 75mm thick core is from Just Jap Imports and is designed originally for a GC8 WRX. With some mods, it can be made to fit an older RS turbo and look really neat too. The kit is stainless steel, meaning it's easy to cut and weld and looks great. We've covered front mount installs a few times before, so if you want to see this one, check out our second channel at MCM TV 2. The only thing left to do was to bin the tired old Mitsubishi Turbo and put on a VF23 STI Turbo in its place. They spool up fast and make great power on the 2 litre. With everything finished, it was time to pack the car and head interstate for another national meetup. This time, to a little island, where Moog is from, which would explain a few things. A 900 km drive to Melbourne gets you to the ferry terminal. It's then eight hours on the ferry through Bass Strait. it's another three hours drive to get you to the south of the island and the capital of Tasmania, Hobart. cruise roads, breaking a few cars and some big nights out, we found ourselves here, Baskerville Raceway. They line us up four at a time, I start on one, the guy next to me is on two, then three and four behind us. And then we go for it like a proper freaking race. This is gonna get expensive. Somewhat broken from the night out that followed our race day, we headed to the harbour and then said goodbye for another year. I need steps. Christopher skates on acid, that is you bro. I need an instructional booklet. I think your brain needs an instructional booklet. I think I boot up in the morning. Brain. <laughs>
car, drove it two and a half thousand kilometers, and I loved every single second of it. Nothing broke. Having well and truly proved itself, one thing is for sure. This reshelled RS has more than earned its stickers. With the stickers on, it's now time to settle the score with Moves S15. But that's a story for another time. So there it is, it was a heap of work, but I've now reshelled my car into something that's fast, it doesn't leak water, it's not rusty, and most importantly, it's gonna destroy Moves S15. Ah uh, yes, uh, apparently it's gonna destroy my car, which is pretty funny because to do that, he had to reshell the car, put a turbo on it, put more boost on it, put front mount on it. So I think to make this thing fair, uh, in an episode or two's time, I'm gonna do some similar mods to my car, and then in a public place, with the cameras rolling, we're gonna do this Nissan V Subaru thing once and for all, so you can all watch as Marty gets destroyed. See you next time. Oh, <laughs> the eyeball, dude. <laughs>